Hey guys, and welcome back to Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate. Last time we took down the Great Ruggy, and now we are going to have our reflexes tested with the Bear Off. But before we get started, we are going to be doing, well, we're going to be looking at some conversations real quick, uh, mostly with these guys, and we're going to be talking about uh, decorations. So, let's just take a look here. Ah, no. So these guys are just going to talk about, the, you know, the hunting fleet boats fixed up. I don't think they give us anything. Oh, that's that's a shame. But we can upgrade those boats uh, via the Argosy Captain, which is something I forgot to mention. But, uh, okay, so, jewels, decorations. Uh, we have to go to this guy in order to craft said decorations. And if you're playing this for the first time, there are two jewels that you definitely want to start out with. You could do either or. But make sure you do one of these two. A Vitality Jewel, which can increase your health. Or the Grinder Jewel, which speeds up your sharpening speed. For this particular quest, it is going to be incredibly valuable for you. Uh, in this case, I did not have the Dragon Toadstools uh, to do the Vitality Jewels. Which, by the way, Dragon Toadstools are just as important as the Kelby Horns, which I mentioned way back. And they are... You can grow them in the farm, however, it's very costly. So, your best option is the Grinder Jewel. And these uh, work just like the skill points in your armor sets. So, if you look at them, you saw the little skills that you got, and you saw what, uh, how many points each piece of armor gives you. And so, this is what I'm going to make right here. You need uh, Great Jaggy Claws, you need Macolite Ore, and you need five of these jewels. So, there's one... Two, three, four, and five. In order to set the decorations, you have to go to, well, set decorations. And you need to have slots in either your weapon or your armor. This one has one slot. So I am just going to fill everything up here up with uh, jewels, which you I do believe you have to pay uh, the, the smithy in order to set these decorations. And that might not seem like a whole lot. It's like 10 zenny uh, per jewel. However, it adds up all the time, uh, over time. But there's also a little trick that you could do in order to negate this. And that is create an equipment set. Which you could go over to your item box, go to equipment sets, and register equipment. I already have one set, and that's my, uh, my hunter set. So I'm just going to go over here, and I'm going to set it into, well, set 2. And so... It always saves uh, what armor it is and what's in the slots. So let's say that uh, you wanted something with uh, vitality and you it's in a different armor set entirely. And you don't have any jewels inside your Kuopeko set. Well, if you have the equipment saved, then that will automatically be done for you. And I'm pretty sure it is uh, no charge to you. And you would be surprised just how valuable having sharpening speed is. Which, by the way, let me uh, go into status here. So, speed sharpening. That's great. Also, these are the Kuropeko uh, skills that I didn't uh, I didn't mention before. Let's see, uh, this one is probably the most valuable one. However, I don't think it works for Shakalakas. And it uh, it's only really useful in multiplayer. So it's a, nothing really beneficial to this set other than the slots for the jewels. Okay, so we're going to lead the charge with Baroth. This guy is... Oh, uh, he is fast, he's powerful, and he's going to hurt. Which, uh, by the way, that's one more thing I just remembered that I need to go and do. And that is upgrade my armor. Which uh, you need to have armor spheres in order to upgrade said armor. By the way, also Memo, uh, bring some cool drinks, it's going to be hot as fuck. So, uh, it works just the same as upgrading swords, however, you just need some money, and, well, armor spheres. So, I want to be able to take as many blows as I can against this guy, because he is quite strong, and even though I'm off to a good start already, I'm not so strong. It is a pretty costly 
uh, choice to make as well, so uh, make sure you have the funds in order to go and buy those upgrades. Okay, so, Baroth, very unique monster. Uh, he will cover himself in mud, and depending on if he's covered in mud or not, determines what he's weak against. If he uh, doesn't have mud on him, he is, uh, I believe he's weak to fire, but uh, resistant to water. And if he does have mud, I believe it's the exact opposite. And what am I doing here? Okay, yes, there's my rations. Or I could have that backwards because, you know, it's a 50-50 shot of being right. Uh, the guy's weak point is also his arms, too. He's one of those monsters. He's classified as a brute wavern, which means uh, he is incredibly tough, especially around the facial area. So be very careful when fighting this guy because he's also the first monster that we encounter who has a roar that stuns. So, yeah, be very, very careful against this guy. That's why you don't want to be a, a blade master with a slow-moving weapon like a great sword or a hammer. Though, the hammer is great against this guy when it comes to stunning. Okay, so this is how he gets mud on him. He just, he rolls on, on the ground like a dog, but he also throws muds off of him, which at one point, I remember I watched a Let's Play and they called those things egg sacks and that bothered the living hell out of me. But that was his roar right there, so if you're hit by that roar, you will be stunned for several seconds, and if he's in rage mode, he odds are he's gonna get a few hits off of you. He has multiple breakable spots, uh, including his, uh, his head, his arms, his tail, and every place where there's mud, you can break it off. And you get shiny drops for it. In fact, uh, and one of his, uh, one of the things is also uh, sort of like a fertilizer for the farm, and it's called Fertile Mud, which you also need for upgrading your armor. But uh, you'll find out just how much of a pain this guy, yeah, right there, you see? See, I can't do shit. I'm trapped in mud, and thankfully Chaka, Chaka's gonna hit me, and, well, that's how you get out of mud normally. It will break off on its own. However, it's much faster to either use the cleanser that you get from the item box or have Cha-Cha help you out, which is one of the few things that he does that's very, very useful. Uh, by the way, if you're going and grinding, make sure you bring Cha-Cha with you because you want to level him up. Yes, he's a useless piece of shit, but, you know... So long as he can take some hits and stand out in the field for a little bit longer, he is ex he's, uh, represents fodder for an extra period of time. So that will be quite helpful. And there is a trope right there for um, uh, large monsters, uh, particularly the wavering types, is that they have sort of like a tailspin. You saw that with the Kuropeko most likely. And that they will do two cycles where they swing their tail around and attempt to hit the hunter if he's behind him or whatnot. A lot of Waverns have that, and it can be very annoying. And as you saw that charge there, that's his most uh, valuable technique. And oh my god, wow, his body is just breaking a lot faster than I thought it would. Oh boy. If you jump out of the way, like dodge, uh, jump diving or panic diving or whatever it's called, uh, that allows you to avoid roars. It is also very much possible if you have uh, a, a upgrade that allows you to dodge a little bit better. I forgot what it was. I think it was like evasion up. Then you can uh, roll through the roar completely and not be affected by it because of invis invincibility frames. It is also possible to do the exact same thing without evasion up, but it is very hard to do. It's like frame perfect. I am not joking. It is possible, but it is very difficult. And when this guy is in rage mode, that is, he, his charges get more frequent, they get more powerful. So, another thing to keep in mind about this guy. This, if the Royal Ludroth and the Kuropeko don't test your patience and abilities to hunt, this guy will. It took me forever to take this guy on when I first fought him. He is a pretty difficult monster if you're doing him for the first time. And it's because of his speed is the reason why you don't want to be really using a greatsword. And oh my god. 
Because though the great sword is powerful, you need speed against this guy. Speed is like it's a great thing to have against a fast monster. There is another monster that we'll be meeting later on who's even faster than this guy. You really don't want to be using a great sword against him. But traps will work great on a fast monster. So long as you can oh boy. Uh, I'm not sure if that's going to come on the video or not, but I just looked at my capture software and I might need to do a retake because of, uh, uh, it looked like my video just glitched out. So, uh, part of my footage might be a little bit corrupted. I'm not sure yet. Don't you just love video errors? I just saw that out of the corner of my eye too, and I'm recording a bunch of videos back to back. So I don't know just how many videos could be affected by that. So, uh, I'm worried. <laughs> but, uh, not as worried as the Baros should be. Uh, I don't think, even with his little shake where he gets rid of the mud, uh, I don't think that gets rid of the mud, you have to physically break it off. And there he goes. Uh, in cases like that, uh, what, what the hell is they doing? Oh yeah, first aid medic. Uh, yeah, first aid med. Uh, in cases like that, uh, he loses his mud. He needs to come back here in order to replenish the mud on his body. But uh, yeah, you can break it off, and that allows you to get in and hurt him a little bit more. Uh, he also eats bugs. He's an herbivore, and wow, that is just gruesome. And I'm purposely hitting the legs here, that way, well, it, I made a flinch right there, so now he is, he can't eat, which also means that he is going to stay exhausted for a little bit longer. That's good, because we want him slow. God damn it. And it doesn't matter how much mud is gone from his body, if, uh, if he has just a little bit of mud on him, he can still shake it off. And, well, it's still a lot. Just the direction where it flings in is just altered a little bit. Speaking of Shake It Off, shout out to the Taylor Swift song. Okay, now my weapon, weapon sharpness takes a bit of a hit. I'm not sure how much health this guy has. It's just... Uh, could have a lot, he could have a little. I'm not sure. Okay. And why are you still... I'm attacking the thing that is trying to eat you. This goes to show how uh, how loyal these monsters are to the things that are trying to eat them. Uh, I'm not sure if I mentioned I was talking about breakable parts on the uh, Baroth. Well, his tail can be cut off, his arms can be broken, and oh wow, he's ex uh, weak already. And, uh, what's the other thing? And his head can also be broken. Like, it looks like he got clubbed hardcore. It's, uh, it looks like he's in a lot of pain. And that's how fast the, gr uh, the speed sharpening skill is. It just takes one stroke of the whetstone, and you're good to go. Probably the only saving grace for greatsword users. Okay, wow, I was at just out of range of that roar, so he's back in rage mode, and now the fight begins to kill him before he kills, well, me. Or you, if you're fighting him. Keeping up. Alright. So I'm going to attempt to knock him over again. Okay, there it okay, maybe not. Knocking him over is good, leaves him vulnerable, but. Uh, he also, I guess it's sort of like, uh, stumble. He doesn't exactly fall over. Uh, the, I think all Brute Waverns have that, which makes them a bit of a pain to knock over. It's re actually really hard to knock these guys over. Okay, Cha-Cha's out, uh, down and out, and now it's just him and me. I am not all that worried because I just not now know how much this guy can take, and as a result, I just need to outlast. Oh crap. And yeah, there we go. 
That's not good. I'm gonna try to roll. Good thing about this is that you can do... You can hold R to run while you're like this, and your stamina does not deplete. Okay, there we go. Why won't you go down? You're lasting way too long, and I'm running out of stuff to talk about. And the sooner you get done, I can see if my video isn't corrupted or not. And one of the few times Cha Cha actually dances, and I'm not only stuck, the monster's down, and he's almost dead. Ah, oh, come on. This is just a worse luck. Thankfully, at least there, I guess I was close enough. Either that or he was ta attacking Cha Cha. Okay. Well. There we go. That's the bear off. His armor is pretty good, but you're going to need a lot of fertile mud. And in order to do that, uh, you're going to need to break mud off his body again and collect the shiny drop that comes from it. You also need to break his head at some point, which requires at least green sharpness in order to break properly. But yeah, he went down quite a bit faster than I thought, so that's good. Ah, what the hell, I'll give him, I'll teabag him. But do not underestimate a the speed of a Brute Wavern, because they can be quite fast. They are big, they are powerful, they can take a lot of hits. And they're fast. And oddly enough, most of them, I think, either most of them or all of them, they tend to dig into the ground too, to travel to different areas. I don't know why. They don't look like they're very good for burrowing. Especially since they have those T-Rex arms. Okay, so that was the great, the almost a great bear off. But no, that was the bear off. And again, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully my video isn't corrupted. And I'll see you guys again next time. Take care.